the Jcast Network. I'm your host, Aaron Herman. What is blended learning and how do we fix the situation, the high cost of Jewish education? With the opportunity to attend the Westchester Torah Academy Open House and learn more about Jewish education 2.0. Let's take a closer look. Whenever you start a new initiative, uh, it's exciting and also challenging. Why do you decide to bring WTA to the forefront? Well, for me, this is a very exciting project because I believe that affordable Jewish education is essential to Jewish continuity. There should be no barriers to a Jewish education. But the more and more I looked into the solution that is being pioneered in New Jersey, the Yeshiva Hair Ted, is that this is not only a more cost-effective solution, but it's a superior educational solution. We are doing cutting-edge technology here that is going to provide a more effective and more cost-effective solution. The, uh, the, the, the database education provides customized education and teaches kids 21st century uh, skills which will prepare them for, uh, their, for a, a very successful future. Let's talk a little bit about blended learning. Yeah. That's, that's a, like, one of those like, lines that get thrown out there. Why is it successful? Blended learning is very successful because no child can fall through the cracks. By them working you know, 45 minutes an hour a day on the computer, the teachers are able to generate assessment data on all the essential core skills in every single subject. This enables the teachers then to do on-the-spot remediation or enrichment where it's required, and therefore students are getting a very customized education. I think I read a Harvard Business Review study that said customized or personalized education provides two standard deviation results better than normal education. And you have kids, and obviously some people feel uneasy about getting into a new school, but you know, look at miles like the Shiva Hot Team where it's really bloomed and really showed that anything's possible. What, what's the words of advice that you give to prospective parents? Well, for me, I'm very excited to send my kids here. I know uh, my son is like me when I was at school. He could never sit school, uh, still at school. He was always looking, uh, always distracted. But when I see the kids at Shiva Hot Team, how engaged and how stimulated they are, not only on the online-based instruction, but in the project-based learning, I see that he'll do, be a kid who, who succeeds and does very well in some, such a stimulating environment. And Westchester is a, a really interesting community, yeah? different spectrums. How do you feel it's going to play out in the community? You know, one thing that's uh, interesting about Westchester is that it's a highly educated, very successful professional uh, community, and this community understands the importance of a, a good education, and I personally think that this is the best education that you can get right now. So whenever you're starting a school, there's a, a lot of uh, excitement, and uh, you know you're an, an investment professional. Uh, you you know the rewards and you know the costs of doing things the right way and the wrong way. Why did you decide to get involved uh, in really building uh, schools up from the ground? Well, really for me, when I first got involved, it definitely was related to the affordability crisis that faces our community. Um, I had known an acquaintance in the neighborhood who um, was actually a traditional Jew who was sending to a local day school and had a reversal in his economic situation, and he was forced to pull his kids out of yeshiva. Uh, he tried to go and ask for scholarship. The, the yeshiva tried to work with him, but they really didn't believe that he, someone of this caliber could could need scholarship and by the time he was pulling his kids it was too late already and they tried to come back and, and save him and, and the yeshiva acted very appropriately and really tried to work with him but it was just one of those circumstances and and so originally I got involved it was really from an affordability standpoint uh, but as I moved along the process I really began to drink the Kool-Aid if you will and really feel that this educational model is a superior model that we need to be embracing educationally and if we don't embrace this we're not only uh, doing a disservice to the community from an affordability standpoint, but from an educational level as well. And what excites you about Jewish education? About Jewish education? Yeah. What excites me? Well, I mean, listen, education is everything. It's the foundation uh, of everything we do. Everything after your uh, day school years is just a constant um, stress in life 
causing you to slip off that pedestal. And so, so the foundation is very, very important and the ability to really innovate and create a strong foundation both in, in learning and in, in, and in creativity and <laughs> analytic thinking is very exciting to be a part of that. In your presentation, uh, you, know, you went through like blended learning um, and the, the, the power of technology. Why is it so imperative to integrate technology into the classroom? Well, I think because it enables tools to really elevate the level of education. So that it's just critical. And, and an additional byproduct is it also reduces the cost per student. So we, we now have an innovative technology that can also create a more affordable product for our students. It's, it's just like you go into a Walmart right now, you see tennis rackets. When you were a kid, they were $80 for the high-end tennis racket. Now in Walmart, they're selling ten exponentially better technology in the tennis racket that's now $12.99. So if we could reap those benefits in education, I think we'll all be going a long ways towards, um, towards educating our children better. You know, growing up in day school, even myself, sitting, sitting in one place, it's always difficult. And with technology, you actually can, can track, actually see where you are. And then once you get to that certain point where I'd say you're stuck, and you pass that level, you can become right. even more successful. Right. Why do you think, you know, the, I guess, the larger Jewish community not embracing technology? Well, I think change, as some of the speakers spoke about tonight, are, is slow to come and people cling to, to old methods. Change is a little scary. Um, I think at this point there's so much data that that's a legitimate question to ask, but frankly technology moves very, very quickly. And um, it's really five, seven, eight years old since the beginning of this type of innovation. And so in the relative scheme of things, um, what you see with technology, once you pass that critical point, then it really spreads like wildfire. And in starting th this school and the other two schools, our sister schools, uh, Tiferet and Yeshiva Hatid, that was the idea to really innovate aggressively with an eye towards affordability. And then we hope that within the next two, three years, you won't be asking that question because everybody's going to be embracing this this uh, technological change. And tonight, you know, over 150 people came out. Mm -hmm. Is that a surprise to you? Um, it, I, well, actually, we set up for 180, and we had to add another 20 chairs, <laughs> and it was standing room, so <laughs> hopefully it's over 200. It definitely was very gratifying, and it was a surprise, obviously a pleasant surprise, and we hope that, you know, this product will really speak towards the community, and people want to send their kids um, not only because of affordability, but more importantly, because they'll feel this is the right educational path to choose for their child. Whenever you start a job, uh, you never know where it's, where it's going to go, and it's, especially in your position where you're really, from the ground up, uh, developing exciting uh, educational experiences for uh, through education. Um, what inspired you to go into this field? Well, so actually when I was in college, I. Uh, I got degrees in computer science and business. I was in a management and technology program. And in that program, we really focused a lot on innovation and how you can use technology and best management techniques to really change everything and just look at how that's changed pretty much every industry. But unfortunately, there's one industry you know, where it really hasn't transformed anything, everything in the way that it has in all industri industries, and that's education. I couldn't, couldn't help but just realize how much could really be brought to the 21st century when it came to education, and in Jewish education, even more so. And the idea of applying these, I these ideas uh, of, of disruptive innovation to education, which is something that I feel so passionately about, and something that the Jewish community feels so passionately about, was really just something that I could not pass up. And you're sourcing uh, from things that are working in the educational community. Uh, blended learning is something that is, uh, really is a game changer in Jewish education. What are you seeing uh, within the, the tech world that is uh, really going to take Jewish education to 2.0? In the Jewish tech world? Yeah. Well, what's, you know, what's interesting here is you have, you have the supply side and you have the demand side. And it's, it's interesting to see how they play off each other, right? You know, you have schools start wanting to use technology more, so companies start start progressing, and they say, you know what, maybe we could do this better, maybe we could do that better, and then we could sell it to the schools. And, and as these new schools are starting up and really redefining what a school could look like, they therefore redefine what a school needs from a technology perspective. 
and we're really starting to see companies and groups and startups, for-profit, not-for-profit, pop up all over the place with different ideas of how they can use technology and online content to transform Jewish education. And it's definitely in its infancy stages right now, but we're, def we're seeing a huge increase over time. There's way more this year than last year, and there will definitely be way more next year than there is this year. And let's talk about like, Yeshivati, because that's really like the, really the epicenter. People are looking to that as, uh, as the model to build out successful uh, Jewish day schools of the future. So talk a little bit about uh, the process of getting that started and how you're seeing now WTA and T-Ferret um, as, uh, as sort of like the, the next level uh, in trying to educate the community at large of, of investing in this. So from AJE's perspective, interestingly enough, this is a very different experience than it was last year with Yeshivat Hatid. We actually came in at exactly this point in the process with Yeshivat Hatid. So all the work that went up to this point in parlor meetings and recruiting parents and finding a principal and finding a building and fundraising, all of that happened before we ever showed up. Uh, and so we had the privilege of showing up to an open house with 350 people that I didn't have to plan at all, right? And then we come to these other groups and they're just starting and they see they see what's going on in Teaneck and they really, they're really inspired. We want to do the same thing, our community needs it, but we have no idea how to do that. And so, you know, in, in these two schools, in Western Star Academy and T-Ferret, we really had to play a much larger role in terms of taking everything we learned the first time around. It's something that was discussed a lot tonight, that we sh this shouldn't be starting a school from scratch. This should be just starting a school from the starting point of where Yeshivat Hatid has already uh, reached. And that's what's really exciting about this, is that every new school we open should build off the previous ones. And the three principles that we're now working with in these three schools are working together tremendously and have have really high amount of respect for each other and, and their skills really um, really work, they blend together very, very nicely. And we really try to see this as one school. Not, not three different schools are going out on their own, but one group of people that's saying, how can we change Jewish education in every single community, not just ours? Let's talk a little bit about blended learning, because that's something that people sometimes can wrap their head around. Like, how does, how does this work? Um, what are you seeing? working and not working. So part of the confusion I think with blended learning is that blended learning can be a lot of different things. And the way, you know, it's pretty easy to think about it as follows. You have one end of the spectrum, right? One end of the spectrum is really traditional, old school, face-to-face, -face, teacher lecturing in a classroom, no technology anywhere to be seen. The other end of the spectrum is completely online learning. You're sitting in your living room on a computer taking some online classes. And anything in between is, online, is considered blended learning. And so when you hear people talking about blended learning this, blended learning that, they could be talking about two completely different <laughs> models that look nothing alike and have very, very little in common, but technically speaking, they're both blended learning. So that's part of the confusion, that it's really not enough to just say, oh, we're doing blended learning, because you can just throw some technology into a classroom and, and a little bit of online learning here and there, and you can call that blended learning. Or you can say we have an online classroom, or we're gonna hire a tutor to work with the student a couple hours a week, that's also blended learning. So what we're talking about is really trying to find the right balance, right? And, and we're not think, it's not that we start with the end state. We said we have two tools. We have teachers and we have computers. And how can we use each of those with their strengths and avoid their weaknesses and blend those together to find the perfect balance of those tools to educate our students properly? Because at the end of the day, it's not about the model. It's not about this blended learning term. It's about how can we do the best job ed educating each and every student as we possibly can. And what's your hope in the next, like, let's say two years? My hope is that, you know, first and foremost, my hope is that these schools continue to prove that this is possible. There's a lot of naysayers out there, and the only way we're going to overcome that is if we prove them wrong. And if we really go out and we say, look, this is happening in the Jewish Day School, and our kids are happy, and they're learning, and they're progressing at their own paces, and parents are happy, and teachers are happy, and the administration is happy, and we're doing this, and we're producing a really high-quality education that is the same or even better than, than what you've seen in other schools, and doing so at a continuing lower cost over time. So that's number one, is just, just taking all these schools and enabling them to work together to find that right model that will actually work and succeed. And once that happens, you know, this is, this is just spreading like wildfire as it is. Even, even, even without us succeeding, other schools have already taken some of this because it just makes sense. And the more we succeed, the more we can share what we've learned. And it's not just our goal to share it with each other, but it's our goal to share it with everybody. And every school should be doing this, and every school will be doing this. It's just a matter of time, and hopefully we can accelerate that process and really lead the way and, and lead by example for all of Jewish education to change uh, forever.
As you can see, blended learning is a wonderful tool to help lower the cost of education and enhance the way students learn. This is Aaron Herman, and thanks for watching.